Okay, a uh, very warm welcome to all of you to this uh, webinar. Um, it's uh, all about how you have reusability in terms of pipelines, specifically in the modern context in a cloud native world. But before we head into it, a uh, little bit of context in terms of what is happening in the current market right now, specifically in uh, large organizations which are involved in banking, telecom, finance, uh, petroleum industries, etc. Just from our experience. So in the past, it was more like Kubernetes or container technology was adopted by uh, organizations which are um, new age, more so like, you know, startups, think Facebook, think Instagram, or think something on the lines of an e-commerce um, uh, website that is within your region. But uh, with the passage of time, uh, Kubernetes has become the de facto standard and what typically happens in such organizations is that they, there are multiple sources of uh, where they source their applications from. Uh, with that being, some of it might be developed internally. Some of it might be like, you know, COTS applications, which are um, supplied by external vendors. For example, take the example of uh, Finical, right? Finical is developed by a company called Infosys, which is a uh, part of uh, the core banking systems of like many financial uh, institutions. With that said and done, uh, there is a need for like, you know, distributing your applications across pretty much any cloud. One being business expansion, the other being like, you know, technical limitations with certain clouds, lack of availability of infrastructure in a particular region. For example, in the Middle East, it's only now that AWS is entering this scenario. And um, like, for example, providing all of its infrastructure, tying up with like local providers in terms of uh, where the data centers are hosted and eventually giving you a Kubernetes cluster, right? So although like, you know, business demands that uh, you expand to as many regions as possible, typically uh, in mature organizations, uh, it's quite the challenge when it comes to like, you know, getting your applications there. Now think about it, if you've got a Kubernetes cluster, the eventual uh, end goal of an organization is to run applications over there. So before we get into that, uh, we would like to like just uh, uh, introduce uh, Motish, who's a technical lead as well. Uh, Motish, uh, what are what are the like you know typical problems that you see when it comes to uh, a, a junior developer who's um, who's uh, working on applications and needs to get his uh, deliverables? To any Kubernetes cluster. Okay, uh, thanks, Prashant, for the question. So, I'd like to, uh, in general, tell about uh, what are the problems individual DevOps or developers, even new ones, even the old, old experienced ones face uh, every day. <clears throat> so, the main problem I see is uh, the time that is spent on uh, the development versus uh, configuration or, or deployments onto multiple. Ecosystems and multiple infrastructures. <clears throat> Basically, whenever a developer comes into uh, developing mode, and uh, he'll have to set up some some of the uh, things that is required for his day-to-day uh, -day work. So, for testing his day-to-day -day changes and delivering a, a solid proof, a solid uh, product. So, he has to set up some of the stuff, uh, all the microservices as of now. We have multiple microservices uh, in our day-to-day -day work that are involved for setting up uh, for uh, testing the things. So the most of the time is spent on uh, configuring uh, all the different uh, infrastructure con components, and then he can uh, test out test out what his features are. So this uh, this place we are spending too much time. That is one of the problems I see in day-to-day uh, -day DevOps workflows. And this happens not just a single day, it happens every single day. And it happens with every developer and every DevOps engineer. And that consumes a lot of time and it requires a lot of training when it comes to, so if a new developer, if you are onboarding a new developer onto your team, so you'll have to train them uh, regarding your infrastructure, how, how the different components fit together and for him to get up and running with the setup of uh, everyday development workflow. So you'll have to train those uh, new engineers or even the experienced ones who came from a different organization to your organization. 
it happens every day and it can be <clears throat> we can't do it right all the time basically so even for experienced uh, developers it, it happens that uh, they'll get into some configuration issues and they'll try to debug those uh, issues and it consumes a lot of time in the process of development delivering the product from development stage to the deployment stage so and this is not repeatable if we are doing it manually and there is a so if what if some some of the infrastructure goes down and uh, you'll have to communicate with different teams and this uh, yeah you'll have to raise tickets and communicate with the team get it resolved and all these things are as of now it's manual which takes a lot of time and you can't give uh, in typical companies will have multiple uh, infrastructures multi cloud infrastructure where you'll have different <coughs> setups for an for development one type of setup and for production there is another type of setup and how do you control the access uh, between development and production workflows that is another area where we have to uh, improve a lot got and it. So, yeah uh, interesting thoughts uh, but uh, just uh, we want to delve a little more into the teams like so now what the current scenario that we have in a uh, product a uh, team is such that like you know you have independent teams like which are managing microservices and con considering that it's heading towards a micro microservice level architecture and uh, what are the challenges that you foresee like do p do uh, development teams have their own preferred frameworks for like let's say quality analysis or uh, security scans etc like what is the scenario right now yeah uh, the typical development process uh, from uh, development to production how it goes is like when a developer submits their code they will uh, the reviewer has to uh, go through the code and <clears throat> has to approve the uh, pull request and it uh, it can't be guaranteed that a reviewer can identify all all the security issues that are happening uh, that, that might arise in the future and it it goes beyond uh, the developer's control where it will have to go into some some uh, staging setup or an alpha setup where uh, your quality engineers quality assurance engineers will test it out and figure out if there are any issues and there is another aspect so quality assurance uh, can guarantee it to a certain level <clears throat> on top of that there, there is some companies will have security teams who, who actually try to uh, uh, test the security issues in the product and this cycle will take a lot of time to uh, proceed further like uh, from development to the de uh, deployment it takes a lot of time to validate uh, each and every step and go through the process of uh, delivering a solid proof and secure um, product so there we need to improve that got it um, on the terms of reusability um, what are the typical challenges when it comes down to like let's say uh, a developer consuming like let's say security standards or quality standards and uh, again let's rewind back to like someone who's setting standards at a framework level like you might have node js that one team prefers and you might have another team programming on go so is is this a major point that like you know an organization follows that like you know that uh, you have a standard uh, repeatable process like and uh, if so like you know what are the typical gaps uh, from uh, you as a technical lead so uh, whenever i observe people uh, whenever at, like there are, there are like multitude of tools that are available today and each individual developer has their own preference towards using those tools even though they are out, outdated uh, they might not want to uh, use the latest technologies and they might not want to learn new technologies some of some people are passionate enough to learn new technologies and try to experiment with the new ones so most of the people i find uh, are hesitant to move from what they know into what new features new tools that are available even though they are uh, more secure and more uh, powerful than what they are using because they learn they have spent too much time on on those tools and they stick to that because of their inertia to move from one technology to another 
and there are uh, well known vulnerabilities in the old uh, versions of the tools and and some some tools are no longer valid for the you know, latest uh, use cases so this area <coughs> so from if i if i have to move the developers from one tool to another we have to train the developers and it takes time so and it also depends on the uh, practices that a developer follows in delivering the product or features so there are some standards that we can uh, each each individual organization can have its own standards and there is no universal standard as as of now that can guarantee a product's uh, security and stuff exactly uh, that's very well put modish thank you for that so the point that we are trying to bring out over here is that you've got so many teams that are following so many frameworks uh, some security scan scanning tools do not support like let's say older frameworks like let's say spring boot but they're really good at like identifying or meeting the needs of a specific team now when we've got a microservice level architecture the one aspect that you've got is like uh, self sufficient teams that is driving the whole uh, software development life cycle into pretty much like you know product and platform engineering teams where product teams or product engineers are wholly and essentially responsible for all of the quality and all of the security but yes you have platform and security coming in and setting those standards that is where like the whole cultural shift is happening and this is typically defined as a shift left uh, movement where um it's not that like you know you develop an application and leave it to somebody else uh, to verify the quality or security compliance aspects uh, you pretty much tackle it well uh, much much more earlier within the software development life cycle preferably like you know even like before the development environment stage that again is subject to the organization that you're in and the scale of your uh, like you know application delivery and uh, the scale of like you know the possible risks that are involved that virus over here i mean uh, business loss downtime or like you know compliance issues regulatory issues uh, so if you make a mistake it's going to be really really costly especially in the in the sectors that uh, we typically like you know deal with so uh again uh, there's one very important point i think that we need to cover before we head into the full technicalities of what reusability means in the modern cloud native scenario and that is like you know the skill set so modish how how difficult is it there are two questions that i have here one is how difficult is it for developers to pick up like let's say the whole cncf ecosystem of like you know kubernetes and the security aspects the quality aspects compliance aspects etc xyz and uh, the second thing is do they really need to know all of this okay so uh, today uh, kubernetes has is the de facto standard for everything that that's happening in the world uh, when it comes to kubernetes it is rapidly changing and there is a huge ecosystem that is growing beyond our control that uh, happens every day like every day uh, we see every month so many projects are getting added to cncf and so all these tools uh, have their own purposes and they have their own ways of uh, adding functionality to what kubernetes offers as a base for us to learn uh, these things and okay uh, we would be used to uh, some of the technologies and some of the workflows that we use every day for kubernetes so if we had de uh, de developed and deployed our infrastructure in a certain way and there might be a new tool that is coming up in the next uh, ne next days and we may not be ready to actually accept that into our infrastructure because because of there will be a lot of moving parts and if we put that new tool into the infrastructure that might break some of the stuff and it's also not uh, easy to expect it's not easy to uh, learn the new things that are the rapid rate at which the new technology is coming up in cncf so it's not really really is, is not easy to learn all the new things that are happening so we need a unified uh, way of saying each developer doesn't need to know uh, all the tools so if there is a system that can Uh, provide all the things that are required and if some some set of engineers if somebody is taking uh, uh, 
the time and effort to put together all the stuff cncf projects and giving it as an abstract functionality to an infrastructure team that would help us in a big time yeah very well put thank you modish uh, with that i will hand it over to modish to take you through the technicalities of uh, what is reusability and how is it changing in terms of a cloud native uh, world where kubernetes is the de facto standard so thanks over to you modish yeah. thank thank you prashant so uh, excelling the problems that i uh, defined earlier so what it takes to achieve a consistent and an efficient deployment mechanisms on to multiple infrastructure multiple ecosystems of uh, multi cloud infrastructure so as of now we don't have any standards that are defined across teams and across companies across organizations so each organization follows its own standards and they have their own ways of deployments and this is not repeatable basically even when you have within the same organization when you have different set of uh, environments where uh, development teams will work on some environments and the production environment staging environment these different types of environments and if you have especially when you have multi cloud infrastructure so you, you should have uh, a way of uh, deploying your own infrastructure deploying your own microservices onto different platforms repeatable in a repeatable fashion so you can't just manually do it every time it takes a too much time so automatic validation and so it, it takes a too much time to actually certify a build and then deploy to staging and then to production if we do it manually it takes too much time so in the fast moving world today so we can't afford to have that much of time lag between releases so a lot of developers time and even devops engineers time and sres time is getting wasted in this area so if you are not repeat if you if your infrastructure deployment is not repeatable so it's not the efficient way of working so we should have a simple and easy to have uh, deployments and it should be error free so what happens when you do manual deployments is uh, it causes human errors so if we are deploying on if it works the common notion is like it, it works in my laptop in my, it works in my environment so this uh, typical developers usually have heard of this phrase basically it works in my setup so that's why it came docker came and you will sh we will ship our own uh, docker image so even then now it exploded into microservices and whole new set of uh, problems are arise because of that so we'll have complex uh, uh, communication mechanisms between different microservices and service meshes is a different concept that comes into picture here and configuring those service meshes and uh, it's a different ball game and it's very difficult and it's not easy to get that uh, done without errors and we need a notification mechanism that can detect errors in the infrastructure and notify us about the issues and if you are doing it manually once again we it's not an efficient way to do it so in this regard how we can uh, of standardization and an effective interface that can uh, bridge, gap, bridge the gap between the development and deployment uh, i'd like to uh, present some of the ideas so what if uh, the first idea is what if we can visualize our infrastructure on the screen on the computer screen and what if you can drag and drop your applications onto your infrastructure just like a, just like in a computer game so what if the ui shows uh, deployment dependencies on all your configurations if you do something wrong in the configuration before you even deploy it onto your deploy it onto your infrastructure if the system is able to show you this is what you have done wrong if you deploy this particular application you will get into errors what if the system is intelligent enough to suggest you that kind of uh, errors and what if we have a whole new set of libraries pre built libraries for uh, deploying into multiple architectures and multiple uh, models modes of deployments like blue green deployment canary and if we have pre built gitops workflows set up and what if we can achieve uh, deployments without writing any code 
it's a complete 100% deployment automation what if we can do it and if we could manage all the cloud accounts nowadays uh, organizations will have multiple cloud accounts and they have uh, different environments different clouds so what if we can manage all those uh, cloud accounts within one platform this is an area where uh, a unified platform can help and so in that regard so there is a an open source tool called tecton which is a very useful tool and which, which is lightweight and generic and it's very flexible as well so with tecton you can actually automate all this all the stuff that i have discussed earlier so most of the infrastructure aspects and uh, deployment aspects can be automated with tecton and because it is a cloud native project so you can use it readily use it for kubernetes and there will be no bottlenecks i'd like to uh, share some of the uh, problems that i see in tecton so basically it it is a bit it takes a bit of time to learn tecton no but not everybody knows how to create a tecton task and how to run a tecton run tecton task run so in this regard some of the tools that uh, are in the market today are helping out a lot in this in this respect so we call that as a value stream delivery platforms so they are uh, they are built on top of tecton which extend the functionality of tecton and provide a lot more than tecton so it actually integrates with uh, all these uh, some of the solutions that we have today are jenkins x ozone scaffold kenny2 and openshift pipelines so some of the things i have uh, multi cloud ecosystems and openshift especially doesn't have doesn't provide you with uh, uh, functionality to manage your own cloud so you'll have to go with openshift ozone uh, on the contrary can uh, provide you with a lot of uh, multi cloud ecosystem management utilities and you can connect all your ecosystem of multiple cloud accounts and multiple repositories and you can automate most of the stuff in your deployment process and uh, these tools have a very good user interface and ozone especially has a, a drag and drop functionality where you can build your own pipelines with just a few clicks and you can automate most of the stuff that i discussed earlier so yeah these tools have some predefined templates and ozone has a huge set of uh, predefined deployment templates that you can reuse tecton templates and even extending the tecton templates uh, like for achieving uh, gitops kind of deployments blue green canary there are pre predefined templates for that and you can manage all your cloud accounts within one uh, one screen So and it absolutely has no learning curve, so it's easy to use. So with that said, uh, we are here up to up to some level. We have achieved uh, a pretty good uh, value stream delivery mechanism for on top of Tecton, and we are still in the process of improving that. And we are trying to make the uh, deployment procedures easy to do and repeatable. So this is where. Uh, this is how what i want to say about the repeatable deployments and yeah reuse of pipelines yeah thank you guys um over to you prashant thank you motish a uh, very well put so again the call back is towards a multi cloud scenario uh, which is being driven by um, largely from a compliance perspective from business and um, lack of availability of certain technologies like you know cloud technologies within certain regions which again pretty much boils down to the region that you host your data in the second point over here is that a uh, shift towards like you know the traditional architecture of like you know how you split your teams which is your developers your quality analysts you've got uh, security uh, security analysts who define policies and you've got like uh, site reliability engineers who help out with the operations now all of these are being merged into pretty much two domains which is platform engineers and product engineers right so with that said and done like not everyone needs to know the underlying aspects of like you know how things function in kubernetes how 
uh, like you know things are handled from the whole entire workflow it it's actually detrimental to what they can contribute because at the end of the day if you look at it from a product uh, point of view you are pretty much looking at um, the value that you deliver to a customer that is the core aspect of a value stream delivery platform where it helps you actually uh, benefit uh, like you know from a business angle that is like you might have a, a devops process that is like you know in the um, uh, that is well defined or so you may think but the question that we definitely should ask ourselves as a whole organization is that uh, is it really delivering value and by that i mean uh, is the automation actually uh, helping you out by that we mean is it uh, repeatable is it reusable is it scalable is it secure or and more so after all of these points are you able to deliver without compromising on quality and security that is imperative in a world where like you know attacks on like you know systems are very very common and there are new vulnerabilities that are being discovered day in day out um, so it becomes like you know the core like system that like you know that you might, you will rely on for a agile uh, development process which is uh, or agile philosophy i must say which is like you know being followed by more or less everyone within the software development life cycle so uh, again the ways that you might measure like you know uh, how your deploy uh, automation processes are uh, like you know efficient there are uh, certain gaps like you know in terms of visibility like for example uh, if if an engineering manager would like to identify is it something on the approval that's taking time or is it a build process that needs to be optimized how do you identify all of this and add add a complexity in terms of um, multiple tools like being followed by uh, individual product teams uh, for example um, some team might be preferring sonar cube because it's already built and everything has been baked in it's all grandfathered in in terms of standards but a new team comes in tomorrow and says hey i want to use something like like let's say clear or i want to use something like snake because it fits much better for my use case and like it solves my problem so you do want to give the product teams uh, agile teams that kind of flexibility that is where the complexity comes in although kubernetes solves like one layer of like orchestration problems but as is always the case if you consider entropy of the world or if you consider physical concepts uh, introducing a lack of concept complexity in one angle is always going to generate complexity on the other side now this complexity is being transferred to developers and uh, developers are not in a position not all i mean there are some really high class developers who deal with it but the what i'm talking about is a generic uh, like you know uh, uh, organization or somewhere where it's widely distributed not everyone has visibility over all of it so visibility is a challenge like for example how do you debug like you know issues like you might have logs from the framework level but what if something is going on at the infra level do you really want to give like cube admin access to those guys of course not so you need to be able to like pretty much visualize all of it in one single platform that is where vsdps come in and help you optimize your devops tool chain uh, uh, like you know in terms of uh, continuous delivery uh, it helps um, platform engineers define standards so that they can uh, pretty much optimize their uh, uh, time in, and efforts into developing something which is automatable and more importantly repeatable and scalable in the Uh, organizational context and by that i mean like you know from like you know scaling the organization like let's say you have 40 developers now tomorrow you might be 500 developers who knows so you need to have all of these like moving parts in place right before you scale otherwise once you scale you're not going to really see the benefits of uh, like you know your automation processes and it should not be a single point of contact who knows all of it it should be standardized within a framework that is why that is where value stream delivery platforms come in and really help you uh, scale your uh, devops uh, transformation processes uh, with that i would like to take a pause and hand it over to abilash um, and abilash please uh, go ahead uh, with your uh, inputs and conclusions if uh, whatever may be in your mind as well 
Yeah, sure. Thanks, uh, thanks, Prashant and uh, Motish for this uh, webinar because we've seen the term uh, value stream delivery platform or a VSDP come up multiple times across uh, maybe um, in as being created as a separate ca category by Gartner or blogs popping up on the net. And we just thought, you know, through this webinar, if we can help con uh, consolidate all those informations through this webinar and, you know, uh, put forth also the point that how uh, uh, Tekton as a framework enables you to, you know, reuse your pipelines and standardize your deployments across cloud and how a VSDP basically extends that capabilities in the form of giving you an UI, giving you a user interface that uh, Motis has explained all the capabilities that can, you know, you know that you have those capabilities. We are making it much more uh, reachable across uh, to the audience, much more accessible. So uh, you can leverage the benefits through a VSDP. And as the name itself says, uh, the platform helps you map your value stream across your DevOps uh, phases and you know uh, the end-to-end -end value delivery, delivery from code to customers is actually pretty streamlined um, through a VSDP which uh, uh, the likes of which like ozone or jenkins x or uh, who or uh, whatever platforms are there uh, are out there they help you deliver this value to your end customers so how they do it is what we have seen through this webinar and uh, you can have more information on um, the respective tools uh, websites or there are many uh, uh, we hope that the category of vsdp comes up soon on gartner and um, the vendors who are listed on the magic quadrant, I think that would basically give everyone a kind of uh, clarity as to what exactly a VSDP does. So, yeah, uh, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us on this webinar. And uh, please take If you have care. any questions, please uh, post in our channel.